Well, that was a bit different. That's my new intro that I've used now for the first time. I will be using it more often in sort of videos that I don't feel I want to use music in the intro. So I hope you liked it. But uh, what I really want to talk about today is the PP2000 PDW. Now, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the PP2000 going back to Bad Company 2 when it was perhaps the best gun for the engineer class because it had such a high rate of fire. Now, that didn't translate across to Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. And I think that's probably because the Bad Company series was a bit more relaxed, a bit more laid back, so the devs didn't have to carbon copy all the stats from the real-life weapon over into the game. Now, moving into Battlefield 3, the PP2000 sort of died a little bit. It wasn't a weapon of choice for many players out there. That was due to the fact that it didn't have a very good range on it. The sort of the bullets got about 10 metres and then just fell on the floor. So if you were aiming at anything further than close range, you didn't really stand a chance against the enemy. But how about Battlefield 4? Is the PP2000 worth your time unlocking through the engineer class and actually using as a primary weapon? Well, first of all, let's give you a bit of a background about some of the stats of the weapon, some of the things that make it the weapon that it actually is. So the PP2000 is obviously a PDW, which means in Battlefield 4, it's only available to the Engineer class. Now, strictly speaking, the PDWs are best at close range, and that's where the PP2000 is obviously best. It does a max damage of 25 up to 8 metres, so in close quarters combat, it's not actually too bad to use. A slight negative is its rate of fire, which is only 650 rounds a minute, which is a little bit mediocre, so even at close range, it does feel like the gun's chugging a bit when you're firing at the enemy. That doesn't mean it's unusable, it just means you have to be quite accurate with the bullets that you're firing, because the damage drop-off does start at 8 metres, and after that, does landslide a little bit, down to 12.1 at 50 metres. If you are thinking of shooting at targets that are perhaps in the medium range category, you're going to want to lead your target just a little bit. The PP2000's bullet velocity is only 400 metres a second, and adding in that with the 650 rounds a minute does feel a little bit slow and a little bit laggy when you're firing those bullets. It doesn't seem like you're going to be able to hit people at long range unless you get a couple of lucky shots. So we're taking all that into account, we've established that the PP2000 is obviously best at close range. Now having said that, it's still not very good at close range. There are other weapons out there that are by far better than the PP2000. Let's put this into perspective for you. If you're running around on a domination or TDM server, you think the PP2000 might be a good choice for close range. Now it would be if everyone else was using a PP2000, which of course they're not. They're using assault rifles and carbines because, let's face it, those two classes of weapons are far better than the PDWs in this game. Let's say you're coming up against guys holding for masses and AEKs, maybe the AK-5C, something like the CZ-3A1, for example, from the Carbines. You're pretty much going to lose every face-on gunfight that you go into, simply because they've got a higher rate of fire, they've got the same damage as you, which means they're just going to get more bullets off before you've even thought about pulling the trigger. I found the best way to use the PP2000, pretty much making the best of a rubbish gun, is to stick a laser sight and a suppressor on there, and use the mag size to your advantage. You get 45 bullets in a magazine. Now, of course, in Battlefield 4, there is no extended mag option that, like we did have in Battlefield 3, and that's where the PP2000 was let down in that game. It sort of wasn't very effective until you unlock the extended mag, so I'm happy to say that you don't have to unlock that in this one. But with hit fire accuracy on this thing and a suppressor keeping you off the minimap, if you can flank the enemy, then you do have a chance of getting a few kills. If you do manage to get yourself on a flank, make sure you get nice and close to the enemy before you start shooting him, because obviously you've still got the damage drop off starting at 8 metres, but sticking a suppressor on there drops the bullet velocity down to 250 metres, which means anything longer than about 20 metres you're going to have to start leading your target, and that's a real pain even in close quarters. The reason for the laser sight is to make it a little bit more sort of accurate at range, which means if you do have to go for a hip fire shot, then you've got a little bit more leeway with that laser sight stuck on there. You might get to try and blind your enemy a little bit as well, which might help you out, because really, to be perfectly honest, the PP2000 is not really good at anything. And when I say that this gun isn't good in any situation, I totally mean that, because at short range, we've just established that you're going to get outgunned by higher rate of fire weapons. At medium range, you're going to have to lead your target much more than any other weapon out there, really. 
and at long range, it's not even worth thinking about. The bullet drop on this thing is 15 meters per second squared. Now, in real life and in Battlefield 4, the normal gravity effect on a bullet is 9.81 meters per second squared. So it's nearly double the gravitational effect on a bullet, which means if you are firing at long range, you could be firing at their head, but for all you know, the bullets could actually be hitting his foot. It's quite baffling why the stats for this weapon are so bad. The PP2000 is a really recognisable weapon, both in real life and in Battlefield 4. As I said, it's featured in the last three games, so you thought it might get a little bit of love from DICE, but it really hasn't. I think they're determined to kill the weapon off completely. It's pretty much for this reason why you're not seeing some more engineer-centric gameplay in the background. I did try and get some gameplay where you'd expect an engineer to be, sort of around a tank, something like that. And I just couldn't do it. I was on Silk Road, got my tank destroyed, so I hopped out before it exploded. The guy that was 30 metres away, I started firing at him. My bullets are going everywhere, all over the place. Firing over his head, round his shoulder. Probably hit him once, which probably did a couple of points of damage. He just dropped me instantly with a carbine. And this is my problem. An engineer, in certain situations, will probably require a little bit more accuracy at range than he's currently got with the PDWs. Now, you have to use the engineer class to unlock the carbines, which are by far a better class of weapon, and something you probably should use with an engineer instead of a PDW. So overall, I feel a little bit sorry for the PP2000 because it's not got anything going for it whatsoever. As I said, I think the developers are just determined to stop people using the weapon completely. So in answer to my own question at the start of the video, no, the PP2000 is not worth your time unlocking. You should probably really steer clear of it. And if you've got the option, take a carbine with the engineer class because they are by far better than the PDWs that are currently available to you. But anyway guys, let me know what you think of the PP2000 down in the comments below. Is it something you've been using in Battlefield 4? Do you feel the same as me? Do you think it's completely useless? Let me know down below. But that is the end of the video guys, so thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like. And as I've said, comments are always appreciated. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.